Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, I know your deeds that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now the message that Jesus has to the church in Laodicea is full of color in comparison to local culture. Laodicea was founded by the Lydians in 250 BC. And the Lycus River Valley is the meeting place of three major cities, Laodicea, Herapolis, and Colossae. Now we know Colossae from Paul's letter to the Colossians, and also his friend Philemon and his slave Onesimus came from Colossae. Laodicea never really thrived as a city until the Romans took over. With Ephesus on the west and Syria on the east, it had roads leading to Phrygia and Pergamon and other parts of that country. Laodicea became very wealthy due to its commerce. The annual wages of people living or working in Laodicea was actually higher than other cities. So even the Christians were very wealthy. There were two major earthquakes that happened here in 1780 and 6080. And when the government of Rome actually sent help, the citizens of Laodicea refused that help, which was an act of pride. So even the Christians who lived in Laodicea were very prideful about their economic status. In verse 14, to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this. Now Jesus calls himself Amen, which means it's the final statement, like period. It's an Old Testament response to prayer. It means firmness. Remember like when Jesus used to say, truly, truly, I say to you, or verily, verily, I say unto you, that it, it could also be translated as Amen, Amen, I say to you. Like there's nothing else after this. He's the final authority. And so he says, look who's talking to you. He says, I'm the faithful. I'm true and full of wisdom. I was there in the beginning. God, Jesus wasn't created. He was there in the beginning. The word was with God and the word was God. And that word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And in verse 15, it says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, we're not really sure who started this church here in Laodicea. It possibly was Paul because he talks about it in Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. 30 years later, Jesus writes this letter to this congregation, and you can see that they have sunk into apathy. Lukewarm, Jesus says. Lukewarm is the worst of blasphemy because a lukewarm person will say something with their mouth, but their lifestyle would be completely opposite. And Jesus is comparing their spiritual life to something, using a colorful image, that these people living in Laodicea were very much used to. So Laodicea was a thriving city, but there was something wrong. They did not have a good water source. See, the Lycus River was so weak that the water for Laodicea had to be brought from somewhere five miles outside the city. By the time it reached the city, it had a foul taste. And due to the high mineral lime content, it had an awful bad smell even when it was boiled. So no matter how rich they were on the outside, they had to be okay with the lukewarm water that their city provided. Calcification can still be found on some of the water pipes. To the north of Laodicea was the city of Herapolis. Herapolis was known for the abundance of hot springs. It provided clean hot water through the entire city. The aqueducts that the Greeks built are still seen to this day and still in use to this day. The water ran through the Apollo temple and so many people living in Herapolis credited their clean hot water to Apollo. Now to the east, they had the icy cold waters in Colossae, which came from the Cadmus Mountains. Colossae was founded a few hundred years before Herapolis, and though it was a city in decline, people still knew Colossae for its cool, refreshing water. In verse 15, he says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And many times you would have heard this verse and people say you need to be hot for God. But then Jesus three times in verse 15 and 16 says, hot or cold, cold or hot, hot or cold. Why would he give us two options? I believe because both is good. You need the hot waters from the mineral springs from Herapolis, which was bringing healing.
to people. People to this day go up to the hot springs and they take a bath in that and it does heal arthritis. The mineral powers in those hot waters does bring some healing. And then there's the cold waters of Colossae from the Cadmus Mountains. The cold waters brought refreshing to a dry and thirsty mouth. And God here says, if you're neither one of those, I will vomit you out because you nauseate me. Look at the Amplified Bible. It says, I know your deeds that you're neither cold, invigorating, refreshing, or hot, healing, or therapeutic. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you from my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. God says, I want you to be a people that are hot that brings therapeutic healing. Or I want you to be a people that are cold, that brings refreshing. If you're neither, you're spiritually useless. See, I believe as a Christian, the blessing that God has blessed us with, whether it's material or spiritual, especially if it's spiritual, that should be a blessing to somebody else. Or if you have a combination of both, use the gifts that God has given you to be a blessing to somebody else. Bring refreshing or bring healing. Be hot or be cold. When we stop doing that, the church dies. When a church stops doing that, when a Christian stops doing that, their spiritual life dies. Verse 17, Jesus says, Because you say I am rich and I have become wealthy and I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. These people in Laodicea were looking at themselves as wealthy, even rejecting help from the government. And God is saying, your gold on the outside is not helping you on the inside. Let me help you. Let me help you. Your self-exalting theology is leading you nowhere. Your pride is leading you to a downfall. And then he goes on to say, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments that you may clothe yourselves and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Laodicea was known for textile. There was a certain kind of wool that they would take from, a, from black sheep and they would make these tunics which to the, till this day are famous. And God is saying, forget all the black tunics. I'm going to give you white garments, but you got to come to me first. You got to come to me and buy. I salve. Laodicea was known for medicine. Doctors from Laodicea were world famous that they would put their names and faces on coinage. ISAP was created from a certain mineral rock that they would find outside of Laodicea. They would crush and you could put it on your eyes and would bring healing that was known all over the Roman Empire. And God is saying, but even that, you're spiritually blind. You're spiritually naked. You're spiritually wretched and poor. Come to me and buy gold that's refined by fire. Clothing that would cover your spiritual nakedness. Remember Adam and Eve? They were hiding in the garden. And God says, who told you that you were naked? That's what sin does. That's what Satan does. He makes us sin and then he makes us feel guilty about it. And God is saying, come, let me clothe you. Let me clothe you. God is now waiting for us to get ourselves right. He says, I will clothe you. Just come. I will give you good eyes that you could see. I will be Jehovah Jireh. I will be Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. You see the love of God here? These people had gone astray. And in the midst of that, instead of saying, I can't believe you're wretched. I can't believe you're poor and naked and ugly and filthy. I can't believe you've gotten so prideful. He still says, I love you. Let me cover you. Let me clothe you. God's not waiting for us to get clean before he can accept us. He says, I will give you ISAP. I will be your doctor. Come to me. Let me get you fixed. Look at this next verse. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. Now, this is not being said to unbelievers. Many times we quote this verse to unbelievers. Dear sinner, God is standing at the door and knocking. But he is writing this to the church. He's writing this to the church. The church has shut him out. He says, we got everything. 
It's like having a birthday party for me and you didn't invite me. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I want to come into your heart, into your life, and I want to dine with you. That intimacy, we don't, we don't invite everybody into our house and have dinner with them and have, have them stay at our house. It's only special people. It's only people that we know and love. Jesus is saying, let me come in and dwell with you and eat with you and stay with you and have fellowship with you. Look at the Amplified. It says, behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. You may have gone astray from God. You may be a pastor watching this or a minister of God or a Christian watching this. And God's saying, hey, man, I have not given up on you. I'm not giving up on you. I'm still standing at your door knocking. How about you open it? Let's have some fellowship. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to say, oh, finally. But Jesus, my walls aren't painted. My house is a mess. It's okay. It's okay. How about I come in and give you a hand? Let me come and fix it up. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Whatever tribulation you're going through, whatever trial you're going through, remember the Holy Spirit has been granted to you who will guide you in all truth, who will bring to remembrance everything that Jesus has taught us that's in the Word. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You may be looking at yourself one way, but I look at you a different way. It's never too late, my friend. It's never too late. I hope these seven lessons have been a blessing to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.